वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स एंड वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग टू वेरी पॉपुलर मेथड ऑफ सॉल्विंग नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कोर्स एज आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर दैट आई विल बी कंसीडरिंग टू बिगिन विथ डी सी सोर्सेज टू बी प्रेजेंट ऑनली एंड ऑनली रेजिस्टेंसेस आर देयर ऑफ कोर्स दैट आई विल रिमूव सून Uh, that restriction just to get an idea how uh, we uh, apply this method to solve this network main thing is that in mesh analysis identify the number of meshes in general number of equations to be solved uh, is equal to the number of meshes algebraic equation and uh, if you are lucky uh, Uh, in mesh analysis you can reduce the number of equations to be solved provided there exists some current sources in the outer meshes if you can identify some mesh where after this nothing is present then that mesh current is known that is therefore only for example two meshes are there we have to solve only one equation this mesh current being known now what happens uh, wh when i consider a circuit uh, like this for example you have a network like that suppose this current is 2 ampere and this is there and here is another resistance maybe another battery is present and let us put some numbers to highlight this method because with numbers it becomes easier otherwise lengthy expression suppose it is 4 uh, volt it is 6 volt with this polarity is important and this is 2 ampere ideal current source and uh, this is suppose 2 ohm this is suppose 4 ohm this is suppose 6 ohm and i have to find out the currents in various branches and uh, solve this network now and uh, i have decided i will apply mesh analysis so first thing i identify the meshes independent meshes are this two only so i will assign a current i1 here and i2 there this is i2 two mesh currents unfortunately here i cannot say i2 is 2 ampere 2 ampere in this branch but about one thing i am sure current in this branch because of this assumptions of this mesh current the, the, this is true i2 minus i1 is equal to 2 this is definitely true has to be because in this branch current is fixed a current source is present so um, what do i do then if i want to apply mesh analysis as i told you that uh, suppose i attempt to write down the kvl equation in mesh 1 kvl in mesh 1 it will be as we have learned the sum of all the voltages in this loop has to be zero so coefficient of i1 will be 6 into i1 is not coefficient of i1 now here comes coefficient of i2 
there is no resistance here. So, it is expected coefficient of I 2 will be 0 I mean minus 0 into I 2. Let me write that minus 0 into I 2. And uh, on the right hand side, I will write about the sources. What are the sources? 4 volt is present. So, on the right hand side and direction of I 1 is in consonant with this polarity of this 4 volt. So, plus 4 volt will come there. Now, there is another source which is 2 ampere current source, but as I told you when the current source is there, it is true the current in this branch has to be 2 ampere, but voltage I do not know, got the point. So, that becomes an additional unknown. Therefore, uh, the rule is same 6 i 1 minus 0 into i 2 is this is equal to and only two messes are there is equal to the source terms will appear. So, it is plus 4 volt it is over. Now, here you have to then assume this thing I do not know this voltage is x volt because in an ideal current source current is fixed, but voltage is decided by what are the things connected across it so many things are connected some voltage will definitely appear across x. So, this can be taken into account by writing like this, but here is the important thing this is voltage across current source assumed voltage. I have assumed both the polarity and magnitude of the voltage x as I have shown assumed voltage across current source. <clears throat> so, this is the equation. So, uh, what will be the thing then 6 i 1 will be equal to 4 minus x. So, it looks like there are now 3 unknowns two mesh currents and this x fellow. So, this is in mesh 1 in mesh 2 k v l in mesh 2 will be coefficient of i 1 nothing there is no common resistance. So, 0 into i 1 then coefficient of I 2 sum of all the resistances 6 only plus 6 into I 2 that will be there and this should be equal to the sources on the right hand side sources should appear that is the logic we developed earlier from the basics. So, so this must be minus 6 volt because direction of this I 2 and plus are opposite. So, minus 6 and then there is another source whose voltage is not known, but I have assumed it to be x here. Should I write plus x or minus x? Plus x because this is the direction of I 2 and here is a source whose voltage is plus and minus. So, so plus x volt. <coughs> So, uh, this equation was equation 1, this equation was equation 2 and this is equation 3 and nothing is to be worried about. So, 3 unknowns, 3 equations. Therefore, the point I want to stress, uh, if a current source appears in the common branch between two adjacent meshes, then the number of equations are to be solved is not equal to the number of meshes, but one more for in this problem more 
three equations. This is one, this is two, this is three, is not? But if this current source appears in the outer loop, then you really get advantage. <laughs> Got the point? In any case, uh, in normal thing, we say generally in mass analysis, number of equations to be solved is equal to number of passes. And uh, in some particular cases, when the uh, current sources are present in the outer meshes, in some outer meshes of a circuit, then you get some advantage because those mesh currents are known. But uh, number of variable increases when there will be current sources present in the common branch as in this simple example we see I 1, I 2. There of course, uh, 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 related by this uh, current source simple equation I 2 minus I 1 has to be 2. And uh, then voltage of this current source is unknown. So, while writing down KVL equations, uh, you follow the same rule coefficient of I 1, sum of resistances and so on. Coefficient of I 2, if there is no resistance in this branch, it is 0 into I 2. But on the right hand side, this x will has to appear. Do not be under the impression this voltage is 0, you do not write anything here, it is not short circuit. Often students make mistake here, understood. Therefore, if at all you choose mass analysis, you should be careful about these points. Try to take advantage of the fact that current sources in many of the outer loops are present. Oh, immediately go to mesh analysis, because outer loop current sources means those mesh currents are known. Number of equations will be to be solved is will be less than the number of meshes. If current sources appear in the common wall between the two adjacent meshes, then actually number of equations to be solved becomes more. Understood? This point must be highlighted. Once again one can apply, after you have solved as I told you, solve it, get the values. If I 1 comes out to be negative, then it is a good practice at least when you are uh, beginning to learn this course, redraw the circuit. So, the actual current direction, if I 1 becomes negative, put it negative, see that KCLs are really satisfied, then you can do power balance of the network as usual. Okay. So, that I am not doing. So, I, I am also not solving this uh, network. So, three equations, three unknown, x appears as another unknown. <coughs> now, I will tell you about the nodal method that is also very interesting and uh, see the point is there are several techniques. If you know those techniques, then for a given network, you try to adopt a method which will reduce your labor to solve the network. That is the whole idea. Efficiently, you try to solve that. So, nodal method of solving network. for solving network problem. <coughs> Very good. Okay. Now, in this problem, once again let us take a an example. Suppose and first I will write down in terms of variables, uh, I mean symbols E 1, this is R 1, this is R 2, let there be another voltage source there, it does not matter, E 2, 
there is voltage here voltage there and there is a resistance here and another resistance there okay and also there is something like here So, E1, let this be E2, let this be E3, and this is R1, R2, say this be R3, and this be R4, R5, and R6. In nodal analysis, what they say is this that first identify how many nodes are there as in case of mesh analysis we identify how many meshes are there. Now, uh, junction between two elements in general can be called a node in general. Okay. But here what I will tell is this a node is a point where more than two elements ends are joined. For example, this I will call a node. Got the point? For example, this I am not going to call a node. Elements of R2 and this element source is a, ends have, have been joined. This I am not going to call so, at least uh, so, so nodes are these things at least more than two elements ends have been joined that I am going to call node. So, here you see this this becomes one node 1 to 3 ends of 3 elements have been joined this I am not going to call a node although it can be called loosely, but uh, this is how and this is another node and this is another nodes and of course, uh, this becomes another nodes and uh, name the nodes for example, call it A, B, C and let us call this to be O. <coughs> the essence of the uh, nodal, nodal method for solving electrical circuit centers around this fact. I have told you that given a network, the potential between any two points, what does it mean and how to calculate that, I know. For example, if you have a resistance, first, first uh, let us try to understand, this is R this is point A, suppose uh, not in context with this A, B in general. Then the current uh, through this if you say from A to B current is flowing that is what you have assumed, then I must write I is equal to potential of A with respect to B divided by R. The same thing one can write uh, that uh, same, same R same A B points and if you assume the current to be in this direction, he will write x ampere, he should write V B A by x R. You must understand this point. So, depending upon the direction of the current that is your choice, uh, uh, potential of A, potential difference across R is V A B. We know that. Now, if uh, this current in the circuit there is some other point O and if you have calculated uh, V A B can be written as V A O minus V B O. 
with respect to same point if you know the potential of point a with respect to the same point if you know the potential of point b then v a b will be nothing but the difference of these two why because you see v a o for example in this example v a o i know what i mean i have to start from o try to reach point b so i start from o suppose i decide i will go by a by this path so potential of point a can be written as from this to this whatever voltage will be there that is also potential difference between these two points v b o start from o v b o you will get that is this drop and this drop with due regard to their plus minus sign you calculate this you have reached this point is not v a o is equal to v b o then from this to this you have to go and that voltage is what v a b whatever it will be potential of a with respect to b you go therefore v a b is always v a 0 minus v b 0 it is an important thing that is with respect to but the, the but the point of reference should be same for both the ends okay so this uh, you must understand and then i will say that um, forget about this we have understood this and this point <clears throat> so that is the thing so what is done in nodal method is that first you identify how many nodes are there in this particular problem number of nodes sorry number of nodes is equal to which i will denote it by n and in this case it is 4 it is that then uh, what we will be doing is this we will be and then i say that choose a reference choose a reference node node i have identified the node i have chosen a reference node and that reference node i have named it as o at this point you must understand that any of this i could choose as reference not necessarily this one got the point i could choose c as my reference now what is the reference node with respect to this node i will calculate the potential of other nodes that is i i, I am going to find out vao vbo and vco got the point if you have had chosen c as your reference then you will say i will calculate all the potentials of the circuit with respect to this point vac voc vbc so in this case i have just arbitrarily chosen o as reference node generally one observation is this people choose that point as a reference node where uh, many um, ends of uh, have been joined more than 3 4 5 ends are joined that point we will come to this so i have chosen o as a reference node then i know what the o, 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 what is the meaning of vao vao means potential of a with respect to o potential of b with respect to o potential of c with respect to o so this is e1 e2 e3 and e4 now i make one statement that in a network my 
final thing I have to calculate what will be the currents in various branches. For example, in this branch, in this branch, what will be the currents. Now, uh, as I told you, current in an resistance, if you have x and y as its two terminals, and if you want to find out current in this direction i, then you must write i as potential of x with respect to y by r. This is crucial. There you do not fumble. This is the thing. Now, I am saying that if by some means, by hook or by crook, if you can somehow know these voltages, these three voltages, somehow you have been able to calculate doing what that we will discuss. But if I say that in this net network, note that V A O is known. V B V O is known say it is 10 volt, V B O is 5 volt, V C O is 12 volt. Suppose I say that, then I will say uh, uh, the calculation of branch currents will be just very simple now. Why? Suppose, suppose, suppose these are known, these are known. Then I am saying that all the branch currents can be calculated using those three information alone. How? Let us see. For example, to calculate the current in this branch, say I say I want to calculate this current in this branch. Although this is not named, let me give a name x, this point let me call it x. Then what is this current I, x, I, I 2 say this branch current I 2 will be V a x potential of a with respect to x divided by R 2, grab the resistance in that branch find out voltage across that resistance divided by R 2 and no one can contest me this is absolutely correct. Now, this V A x this is the crucial step I will write it as V A 0 minus V x 0 divided by R 2 this will be this current I 2. Now, then I will say that okay, look here V x 0 now, now this point is crucial V x 0 potential of x with respect to O because these are the things I know V a 0, V b 0, V c 0 somehow I know. So, V x 0 will be how much? Okay, you know V b 0 that means you have already reached point B, then point B you try to go to x. So, what it will be? It will be V B 0, then plus 2 minus, so minus E 2 that will be the thing V x 0. Therefore, you see I 2 then becomes I 2, I 2 then become V A 0, then minus V x 0 is nothing but this quantity minus V B 0 minus E 2 is not and that divided by R 2 it will be equal to V A 0 minus V B 0 minus plus E 2 divided by R 2 this will be the current. So, can I not calculate I 2 because I, I have told you that V A 0, V B 0, V C 0 I am supplying you the values. Okay, I 2 can be expressed in terms of that E 2 is after all a constant uh, EMF value. So, these things are known I 2 can be calculated. Take this current, this branch currents. 
say this current is I 4. Grab the resistance R 4. So, I 4 will be equal to and this point no name is given uh, let us call it y. So, to be consistent with this uh, expression here I can write I 4 will be nothing but V B y potential of B with respect to y divided by R 4 this will be the current. Then what do I do? V B Y can be written as V B 0 minus V Y 0 with respect to same point divided by R 4. This will be the current. Now, the big question is what is V Y 0? From 0 you try to go to Y, it is plus E 2, nothing else. So, so this is equal to V B 0 minus E 2 divided by R 4. Oh, I 4 can be calculated because V A 0, V B 0, V C 0 are known, very simple. Similarly, I 6 can be calculated, one can go on adding and I am now telling it will be simply you try on your own it will be V C 0 and from this to this minus potential of this point if you call it z B z 0 is minus E 3 plus to minus. So, minus E 3 divided by R 6 and so on. Similarly, this branch current I am very quickly writing it will be uh, this branch current say I 3 if I say I 3 it will be equal to V A 0 will be there minus potential of this point with respect to this and that can be translated into V C 0 minus E 4. And divided by R 3. <coughs> is not. So, so, in fact for any branch you can do it. Therefore, first the point to be noted is this identify the number of nodes and uh, I, I, I just told you today that if this node voltages are known with respect to a reference node voltages say here n equal to 4. So, three node voltages one of them you will choose as reference and there is no condition that uh, O is to be chosen as a reference any one of them can be chosen as a reference I have chosen O. So, uh, the other three node voltages with respect to that reference node if these potentials are known I am telling you you have almost solved the circuit because the branch currents any branch current in this type of network can be uh, expressed in terms of those node voltages as, as example I 4 is V B 0 um, and so on I 2 is this one V A 0 V B 0 plus E 2 by R 2. Therefore, uh, calculations uh, what is the essence of the thing in any branch grab the resistance whatever is present and apply this rule this is the fundamental ohms law voltage across this resistance is the current v a x by r 2 is current from left to right and v a x can be written as v a 0 minus v x 0. So, from o try to reach x and you will find that can be expressed in terms of other node voltages and some sources present. Anyway, we will continue with this in the next class. Thank you.